We have a quorum. Okay, Harvey, what day is it today? It is January 24th, 2022, corresponding to Kuf Gimel Shvat 5782. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, last week we started um, to discuss whether there is a, um, a mitzvah to speak uh, Lashon Kodesh, and um, th that has ramifications not only with respect to, um, in a, uh, hi hypothetically, whether you should speak Hebrew or not, but it has ramifications in terms of what language should people be speaking in Eretz Yisrael. The Hasidic community still speaks Yiddish, or at least some of the Hasidic community and others speak Hebrew, what, uh, what does Allah have to say about all that? So last week, we, um, the starting point was the Torah Tamima has a, a, a comment in Chumash on the Pasuk Vidibarta Bam. And, on, and Rashi says in Chumash Vidibarta Bam means that you have to teach your children to speak Hebrew when they begin to, to, uh, to converse. You should teach them Torah Tzivu Lona Moshe and you should teach them Lashon Kodesh. But um, other Rishonim seem to disagree. There's other sources. And he, he, he makes reference to a long, um, it's not a memo, really, it's a pamphlet that he wrote called, I forgot what it's called already, something that won him, and uh, where he has about 30 pages about this topic, whether, you're, whether there's a mitzvah to speak Hebrew or not. So th just, I want to, just to bring us back up to speed, there are contradictory sources because on the first page, which I really pulled out of the last week's booklet, the, 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 let's go to the second paragraph. The second paragraph says, Kishatinik Maslu Ladab, this is on the post of Vidibar Tabam. So, Kishatinik Maslu Ladab, other, other, Medabri Malosh and Kodesh, Umulam the Torah. Sifri says, Sifri is Medrash Halacha, and it says, Beferish, that when the child starts to speak, there's a mitzvah. To, to teach him, to, uh, to speak to him in Lash and Kodesh. The Taisefta in Chagiyah, which is right under that, Taisefta is an assortment of Brises that didn't make it into the Gemara, but they're, they're collected in one area called the Taisefta in the back of the Gemaras. So the Taisefta says the same thing. They're supposed to teach him Lash and Kodesh. On the other hand, there's a Gemara in Sukkah, that quotes pretty much the same Bryce. It's talking about what's what he, what's the early chinuch of a child on the top of the page. So the bar says, His father teaches him Torah and Kriyishma, no mention of of uh, Lashon Kodesh. <coughs> the Chaste David, which is the fourth paragraph, which is a commentary on the Chagig and the Toisefta, says that the uh, the Gemara in Sukkah is is omits. The uh, the phrase of of uh, the Melamdo Medavri Melash and Kodesh that you find in the Taisefta and in um, and in and in the Sifri, so the Torah Tamima makes a uh, tremendous tumul about this, and he says that the um, it must be that if the tos, the Taisefta and the um, and the uh, and the Sifri and Rashi and Chumash all say that. The way they quote the, the Bryce is that there's a mitzvah to teach the, the father should speak Lash and Kodesh to the child. So it must be that the Gemara and Sukkah, the reason why the Gemara and Sukkah omits that is because it, it just, uh, it, it assumes that it's understood that if he's teaching him Torah, he's going to teach him Lash and Kodesh. Or maybe the words are missing, but he amends the, uh, the Gemara to include teaching Lash and Kodesh. And then he expresses great puzzlement and wonderment on the Shulchan Aruch which, and the Rambam. The Rambam's in the bottom of the page. The Rambam quotes the Gemara as it is found in Sukkah. <laughs> it doesn't say, the Rambam doesn't say anything about teaching the child Lashon Kodesh. There's one more, and nor does the, Shulchan, the Torah nor the Shulchan Aruch. So uh, the, on the one hand, and there's one more source, I, I forgot to put it here on this page, is the, the Ramam in Parish Mishnayis um, on the second parak of Pirkei Ovis, the Ramam says that Havi Zorba Mitzakal Kibbe Chamura. The Ramam says, What's a Mitzakala? Mitzakala is speaking Simchas Yantiv and speaking Lash and Kodesh. So the Ramam says, Beferish, in the, and the Torah Tamima wonders how come the Rambam in the Yad Chazaka contradicts what he says in the Parish Mishnayis. The Parish Mishnayis says, Beferish, there's a Mitzvah to talk Hebrew. And he leaves that out, but he leaves it out of the, in, in, the, in, 
in Hilchus Talmud Torah. So the Torah Tamima assumes that the halacha is you have to speak Hebrew, but he leaves that as a major question mark. How come the Shulchan Aruch and the Rambam don't don't uh, quote that halacha that you should be that you should speak the Russian Kodesh? So now I'm going to show you two more sources on on page. And then I'm going to show you what this what the Kleisenberger and the Satra Rebbe had to say about this. On page, the next page, that's page one, because um, it was really supposed to be the beginning of the booklet. The Shulchan Aruch says, um, on the top of the page, it says, we have it underlined, and in the second paragraph, it, it's talking about a person going into the uh, the bathroom, but you're allowed to think, uh, it's, it's a base, it says, also, I feel the horror of the Torah, also basically say, you're not allowed to, to speak the words of Torah, you're not even allowed to think words of Torah in a bathroom. And then there are, then the Shulchan Aruch says, Dvarim Shal, Chol muter lamram shamalosh shekodesh, but things that are chol that are not that are that are no, have no sang not, not not Torah, they're neutral. You're allowed to say it even though you're expressing it in lush and kodesh. So that would seem to imply that lush and kodesh is not the same as it's not it's not Torah. It doesn't have the status of Torah, and therefore you can say it in the bathroom. Comes along the Magen Avram, and Magen Avram says on the on the left side. Belashen and the Sifkat and Beis, where it's underlined Belashen Kodesh Umidus Chasidus Hula Hachmer, but nonetheless, it's it's proper to be Machmer, and that's based on Seif that Samaches the answer Seif Chasidim. So you see that there is some um, um, some 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 value in not speaking uh, Lashen Kodesh in the bathroom, presumably because Lashen Kodesh is a holy language. If you look, at the Mishnah Berurah quotes the same thing on the bottom of the page. If you turn to the next page. The Shulchan Aruch says he's talking about reading s- storybooks on uh, on Shabbos, about uh, reading Melitzos uh, Mishalom Shasichus Chul near the top of the page in Sif Tez Zion. He, he says that you're not supposed to read secular novels, Vidivicheshik love stories, Kavol Sefer Amanei, Sefer Melchamas, and and stories about uh, com- battles and confrontations. You're not allowed to read them on Shabbos. <clears throat> so then, in the in the in the Rama, where I have it on the line, he says, "V'nir ledak take had also look rab b'sicha aschulim is sifrei melchamos that which you're not supposed to read on Shabbos secular books hein adafkim ksuvim b'loshen laz that's only if they're written in a for in a secular language ava b'loshen kodesh shari but if it's written in Hebrew you're allowed to read them so why is this?" <clears throat> what what's the why does it make a difference if it's if it's not divrei Torah so why should we have to read in Lush and Kodesh so the Magen Avram says right under that where it's underlined the halashin ba'atzmo yesh bo kedusha v'lomid v'mena divrei Torah the halashin is inherently holy so therefore it's considered a, a religious activity it's not the same as uh, as reading a secular book you're reading it in Hebrew you're reading Lush and Kodesh and that has some. Um, some significance. And Mishnah Buru quotes the same thing on the on the bottom of the page. So here, th- these are two more sources that indicate th- there's not a riot from here that there's a mitzvah to speak Lush and Kodesh, but you see for sure that there's, there's something special about speaking Lush and Kodesh. Comes along the Chsam Sofer, and this is widely quoted on, the, go back to page one, which is really the second page, <coughs> on the left side where I have the arrow. The, the, the third, fourth paragraph, the le- all the way on the left. The Chassam Sofer says, the Magen Avram says, Vinir Li, the Hula Ben Makom, no, he says, the Magen Avram Sif Katan Beis. He references the Magen Avram Sif Katan Beis that says that the Sefer, Chassid, the, the Sefer Chassidim says that L'Chathchila, it's me this Chassid, it's not to speak Hebrew in a bathroom. So he says, Vinir Li, the Hula Adim Ben Makom Gilulam. He says, I would admit, the Chassam Sofer says that if it's a place where there are Avodah Zaras, statuettes that are Avodah Zara, then <coughs> you also shouldn't talk Hebrew. Okay, Venir Ali, and the Chassam Sofer says, it would seem to me, the Mishum Hachi, and Higo, Avosainu, Espenayim, Mibli, Lusapra, Belosh, and HaKodesh. For that reason, people don't, to, don't not teach their kids to speak Lush and HaKodesh. Venishkach, Mi, Tonu, Legamre, Bavosainu, Harabim. And in, in, it's, the Hebrew language has been completely forgotten. The people don't even know how to speak Hebrew. With, the, with, the, with, with Ben Yehuda in the beginning of the, of the uh, uh, return to, to the, of the uh, 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 Elias in, in the 1900s, in the 20th century, 
Then they start to speak Hebrew. But the Chassam Sofer says in his time, nobody knew how to speak Hebrew. So he says, why is that? It's a big pella. So he says, Mishum Because in Babo, there were idols all over the place. So once they got to Babo, <coughs> they stopped speaking Hebrew. So, and he means to say that in Gaulus also, they, 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 uh, wherever people live, there's always uh, uh, Avodah is around. Uh, and therefore, that's why they, because it's not appropriate. They're just like you're not supposed to see Hebrew in a, in a bathroom. So it, in, a, in a secular world where there are religious symbols that are uh, antithetical to, uh, to Judaism, it, it's not appropriate to speak Lashon Hara. You, you would be defiling Lashon HaKadosh. Now this might seem like sort of like a, um, a far-fetched explanation. Why didn't it speak Lashon Hara? I mean, the Chassam Sofer, it was the, uh, was the major post in Europe in the 19th century, in the later part of the 19th century. But even so, I mean, he's, he's saying it based on Amidus Chasidus, that the Sefer Chasidim says that it's Amidus Chasidus not to speak Lush and Kodesh in the bathroom, so therefore you, can't, you shouldn't speak Lush and Kodesh in the street because there might be idols, there might be uh, you know, religious symbols uh, in, in, that you'll pass, in the area where you're talking. So it seems like kind of, a, it's only, the whole thing's only L'Chatchilo. Mikar Adin, the Shulchan Aruch says, Mutter L'Amram B'Lashen Kodesh. You're allowed to, Dvarim Shul Chol, Mutter L'Amram B'Lashen Kodesh. You're allowed to speak in the bathroom. There's no Isser. It's only Midas Chasidus, because Midas Chasidus, they did away with speaking Lashen Kodesh, especially if there's a mitzvah to speak Lashen Kodesh, which is what Rashi says, and the Sifri, and the, uh, and the, and the Tosefta, and the Ramam, the Parish Mishnah is, so because of a because you're worried that maybe you'll you'll pass by a uh, an idol, that's why you do away with a mitzvah of speaking Lashon Kodesh. It seems it seems kind of hard to uh, to to understand. Now I'm going to show you now what the uh, what the the Kleisenberger Rebbe and the Satmar Rebbe have to say about this, and they both basically come to the same conclusion, and that is that it's not permissible to talk uh, Hebrew in Eretz Yisrael. Now, you, you specifically, yes, yes. So, you so you might uh, think that well, that's kind of extreme, and uh, the the Satra Rebbe um, was known for to be a big Hanoi, and the uh, Kleisenberger was a little bit more moderate. The Kleisenberger built the Laniato Hospital, but still, the the Hasidim sometimes they they're, they're more extreme than the uh, the non Hasidish world, but. They the the um, the discussion that they have focuses on two things. The first thing is the the Torah Tamima's contention that there's a mitzvah to speak Lashon Kodesh. He proves that from 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 the various sources, but he doesn't have a good explanation why he has the Tosefta and the Sifri and Rashi and the Rambam, but he doesn't have a good explanation why the Gemara and Sukkah leaves it out. So that's a, a big hole in the in the Torah Tamima's position. But furthermore, what, what makes this topic so fascinating is that how, why in the world did the Jewish people stop speaking Hebrew? They, when they went into Gaul, see, I mean, you'll see the Satra Rav is going to prove that already 2,000 years ago, they didn't, they didn't speak Lashon Kodesh. I mean, the Chassam Sofer basically says the same thing too, as we just said, that they didn't speak Lashon Kodesh once they went, came to Babel. The, the, the Talmud Babel is written, it's not written in Hebrew, it's written in Aramaic. So why in the world did the Jews stop speaking Lashon Kodesh? How come it was first when they, when they came back to Eretz Yisrael, then they decided to speak Lashon Kodesh? Why did, how come for 2,000 years they weren't speaking Lashon Kodesh? It's a holy language. The Shalosh says that you, that, I think it's at the end of the book, that there's a mitzvah to, to speak Lashon Kodesh, especially on Shabbos. So why, how come the Jews didn't speak Lashon Kodesh? So that is a, a very strong um, indication that there's a problem of speaking Lashon Kodesh in Gaul. So before you, uh, you, you dismiss the, the, the Kleisenberger and the Satmar Rebbe as being extreme, but they're dealing with a, 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 a very, the, the question is, 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 is very compelling. That how come, Lamaisa, why, why did they stop? So maybe you'll say, <laughs> yeah, the Matthias, because they were living among the, the Goyim and it wasn't comfortable. But that, that's not such a good explanation because, first of all, a lot of times they lived in ghettos, so they were very isolated. And second of all, they had their own language. So, so what did they do? They took German 
and they corrupted it and made it into into Yiddish. Uh, or they, 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 the Sephardim took, uh, I guess, Spanish and make it and made it into Ladiano. So, Ladino. so what? Ladino. 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 So they anyway made their own language. So why, why, why did they have to concoct a new language? Why didn't they speak Russian Kodesh? The, the guy didn't understand Yiddish, the guy didn't understand Hebrew. So what? Because of the guy. So what, did people, when, what did people in Bubble speak? What did people in Bubble speak? Aramaic. So we're going to see. The Sabah Rebbe is going to say that in Bubble they spoke, they spoke Aramaic. They didn't yeah, speak right. Hebrew. So that, so that's that's point, that's why he spoke Aramaic. We don't know. The, the Sabah is going to say already the time of Ezra they stopped speaking Russian Kodesh. But before, okay, at some the time, point, uh, in the time uh, in the, when the Jews were in the Midbar, they spoke Russian Kodesh, yes. So, so, was, was, so was, that, was that okay? That was okay, but so that's the big question. Why is it? How come they could speak Russian Kurdish? Yeah. What changed? So that that's what Sam Sover says. This is he has this this uh, original theory that it's because they were in Gauls and they were they, they weren't right. living in their own country. And a lot of voters are all over the place. So it but wasn't, that doesn't explain why they couldn't speak Hebrew in Israel. Well, the which period of time in Israel? At what what period, after the. Any, at, after the Corbin Bias Risha, by the Bias Shani, they didn't have control. It was it was under Roman uh, uh, control, and there was uh, all sorts of idols. All you go through uh, Israel, you see there's idols all over the place. They they, yeah, uh, they, but they but they're okay, but they're applying it now too. They're saying in current times. Yeah, well, we don't know the question. They're applying it now, but the question is why? Why is it in fact? They, I didn't tell you the reason why they say, but they the first oh. thing is it's a terrific kasha. Why did they stop speaking Hebrew? How come? I really, I really, I really, I don't think it's a good. I, I, you don't think it's a good kasha? I think it's just messias. Yeah, Jews in France speak French. French. Speak French. Jews in Holland. So what? If, but they anyway didn't speak the vernacular. They spoke a different language. They made up their own language. They went to work there. They came up with a yeshivish German, which is basically what Yiddish is. So once they started to speak their own language, so why didn't they revert back to Russian culture? What? Did Jews speak Aramaic? What? Did, did, did non-Jews speak Aramaic? Yeah. Yeah. So we Jews in France speak French. We speak English here. Jews in whatever everybody speaks. Jews in Italy speak Italian. And in Mitzrayim, like there were. They were Mashkir. They, well, she knows to them. The Medjur says that's that the reason why they were, that's, that's, that's another point. They were living they in the ghetto. Well, well, I can't do three voices. I can't hear. That's the whole reason why in Golas, we Shiva stuff language. We made it Yiddish. We made it yeah, so we're so we're we're by speaking Yiddish, it's also it's a Jewish. It became a Jewish language, but it doesn't. But it's not Russian Kodesh. But it's not Russian Kodesh. It doesn't have the kudu. It, it's not. Right. You're not speaking Goyish. That's what it, that's what it accomplished Yiddish. Right, right. But, but it's, it's not, not. But the the point was, you, you said that he said you don't speak Hebrew when there are idols around. So speaking Yiddish gets around that. Yeah, speaking Yiddish, because Yiddish is not Hebrew, so there's no, right. there's no problem. That's what the Chesam Sover is saying that they made their own right. language, but they didn't want to speak Hebrew because of the, because right. the environment was not. When in, in, the, in the early days, they they weren't the only ones speaking. Goyim also spoke Hebrew when they, they, they Yeah, when there it's a show, probably yeah. the Goyim spoke Hebrew. Oh, so so I mean, just when you go into the, so, so the Goyim were speaking his holy language because that was the language. Okay, there's no nobody would stop a guy from seeing. If they want to speak Hebrew, they could. That's a okay. That's a second question. Is 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 Ivris or Ivrit is Ivrit Russian Kurdish? That's that's another question. What about the words in Yiddish that are actually Hebrew? Is that is that that that's. That's, that's what we're here for to see what the. I'll show you what they did. They did speak Hebrew in Israel. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of rice that they spoke yeah, Hebrew. Like, yeah, that's. No, Ra Rashi says in Chumash that. Um, that's, that's one of the reasons they were in to, to the Gulo. Rashi says that. Yeah, no, but Rashi says in Chumash that they, I forgot he because yeah. the pasuk. It's in some place in Brashas, Rashi says that they they spoke they spoke Russian Kodesh. Other than Chavis spoke Russian Kodesh. Oh yeah, because he says because the Chumash says he called her Isha, he meni Isha Kachtiya. So Lukachazeh, and and he, so Rashi says that you see that that other Russian spoke Russian Kodesh. Rabbi, what language did Rashi and his uh, French. friends French. speak to each other? Not French. Hebrew. French. 
French. They're French, yeah. French, yeah. But not a Jewish language. They just spoke French. In Echinami. Okay. So there were periods of time where they didn't speak a, uh, a, a, a Jewish language. That's <laughs> cool. Why? So you want to say that the that they initially started off that they were talking the language of the uh, of the, the secular the, of the country the host country, and then they they were, once that happened they forgot how to speak Hebrew. And once they forgot how to speak Hebrew, so then when they, even when they started speaking uh, their own language they didn't they didn't revert back to Hebrew. They just but, so, but how come nobody told them that it's you know what it's much better to speak Gosh and Kodesh. Don't look, look at the people look at. Look at, except for the Hasidim, who comes, who came to America and still remembered the next generation how to speak Yiddish? But I'm saying, I'm saying, how come they spoke Wait. Yiddish for about 400 years, 500 years? I don't know exactly when they, they started. Were in ghettos, okay, so, so why the didn't all they had they a lot of gedolim then? Why didn't the gedolim say instead of speaking this fakrumta mm -hmm. language of Yiddish, mm -hmm. which is a mm -hmm. take off of? <laughs> We they could have learned it. So Ben Yehuda could introduce Hebrew, but they they couldn't figure it out. They had Tanakh. They knew they knew Hebrew. They, it's not true. They, but the fact that we, you, but we did it now. If you if you practice, it's not so difficult. If you if you don't, my, my wife teaches the girls in the second grade to talk Hebrew. <laughs> it's not such a big kunst to talk Hebrew. It's not my wife. The, in the day schools here, they don't speak Israeli Hebrew. They speak Hebrew. It's the same language as, as the, the Tanakh. If if there's a mitzvah, especially if it's a mitzvah, there's a mitzvah di bartabam. That's the Torah to me was a big kasha. Well, how come nobody's speaking Hebrew? You could say that there's there isn't a mitzvah or not much of a mitzvah, but there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with what? With, with speaking Hebrew. They could have spoken Hebrew. It would have been fine. It's but two. They didn't, it's they didn't. different. Que there's one question: Is there a mitzvah? There's right. another question: Is is it is it uh, is it okay? Those are two separate yeah. questions. So saying, <laughs> the fact that they didn't speak Hebrew maybe is an indication that there isn't a mitzvah to speak Hebrew, but is certainly not an indication that they shouldn't have been speaking Hebrew. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Let Let's see what they. Uh, how, I mean, the bottom line is. I, I, I might as well tell you the end before I get it, because I don't want you to go away and then you'll tell everybody what I said. And then, the, 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 look at the last page. The, 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 this is the, the who decided in the yeshivas in Israel that they should speak Hebrew. When I, when I came to Israel in 1970, they were still speaking. The shiurim were all in Yiddish. Yeah. Not when I was in Israel in, in BMT. In BMT, because the Whitey Horowitz That's is right. it. That's right. Okay, but he wasn't. He, he, was, he, was, he, was he wasn't. He wasn't European. He wasn't European. But the, yeah, all the yeah. all the Rebbeim in in the mirror were uh, Chaim Shalevitz and Rav Nachum and everybody else and Rav Finkel. They all spoke in Yiddish. So you were speaking English with your chavrus, so you weren't speaking Hebrew with your chavrus. No, and no, actually, uh, by the end, I was speaking. Well, that's an, but I was a when we speak to the Rebbe. When we speak to the Rebbe, we had to speak. We had to speak to him in the Rebbe. And the, wait, 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 wait. When you have, when you, especially with, with people as learned as, as as they were, when you have complex concepts to discuss and to communicate, yeah. You can't do it in a new language. You have to do it in your in the language well, that you know. that Yeah, but it was hard, but we, we actually it worked. Yes, we, 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 it we worked. learned it. But who? It. But you lose it. You but don't do it. You I'm, lose. I'm saying who? Who? who wh how did it? Sociologically, how, how did that transition take place? Okay, I guess it's because the the younger generation they grew up in Israel, so they were yeah. more exposed, but. I, I, religiously, who who gave them the stamp of approval that? Because you see, they didn't speak. He, yeah. the, the, there was the, the Hasidim held you're not supposed to speak Hebrew, and there was when they st when Ben Yehuda started introducing Hebrew, there was a tremendous amount of resistance. He, he wasn't he was an outcast, and they and they uh, treated him that way, especially because he tried to introduce Russian colors. They didn't hold to what he was doing. And, and and many people thought that Russian Kodesh is Ivrit is, is a total distortion of of Russian. If you're going to speak Hebrew, speak it the right way. Don't uh, yeah, they add in all sorts of words and the phrases are different. So uh, there were no pajamas in Tanakh. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Have, that's true. They didn't, they didn't have, have electricity. They didn't have sweaters. Mishnaic Hebrew is different than Tanakh. Mishnaic Hebrew is also is also somewhat different. But it doesn't have the, it doesn't have completely different words. I mean, most of the words that are from Tanakh. Maybe the maybe the set. Oh, there are some. Yes. What? The word for yes in Mishnah Hebrew is almost never, almost, almost never, ten. 
it's almost always hen. Uh huh. Okay. Even yes and no are different. Okay. Well, the 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 Torah's meme. The Torah's meme makes that point. He says that the uh, that languages evolve, and and even the Mish the Mishnah and the Gemara they they evolve, and it's not pure Hebrew. Okay, I'll show you on the last page. Um, it, this I got from a, there's a sefer called Maisa Ish, which is the biography of the Chazon Ish. It says Pam Hiski on top of the page. Pam Hizbir as Amadoso. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's I'll show you. It, they both say the same thing, but look at the lower piece that comes from some a magazine called Aspaklaya. You do a, a, a lower paragraph with his there. You do a Maisa Shasafa with the verse with Amatara Tashbar and Nebrak Haisa Ivrit. They in 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 Bnei Brak, which is where the the Chazonish was the the major influence on Bnei Brak. Well, the sniper was uh, the brother-in-law. Uvo michugi hakanoim gemar and Chazonish schusi yagal heinu l'saper go al kach. They were the the kanoim came to Chazonish and they said, "Hey, you know we shouldn't be talking Hebrew." Ulai yesh yeshana es asafa leIdish. Why isn't it better that we should speak Yiddish? Umar and Achzonish himshul as inyan le Medina she pascha b'melchama al ha'ayev. There was a there was a country that was at at war with an enemy. Uvoli his sides in general zakein. So the army went and they found a, a a senior general who hadn't fought already in years. She yulame tachsisi melchama nisyan hara that he should tell them what what strategies war strategies based on his experiences. After this old man gave over his opinions, a general here, a young general came. Don't pay any attention to what he said. He's telling you old-fashioned stuff. It's not relevant in 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 the contemporary times. Every generation has its battles. That's not what you should be fighting about, about stopping people from talking Ivrit. As much as you could save Jewish children, that's that, forget about uh, this battle about whether you should speak. Because it was an issue. He said, that's, a, that's old story. It's not, it's not relevant. We don't have to. And then in the piece on top, where he says in the uh, where they came the same story more or less that they came to complain about why he doesn't stop the Talmud Torah and they brock from speaking Hebrew they should speak Yiddish so the, he said where I have it underlined he says um, but they say for even if there was a a halachic position that you shouldn't speak. Uh, they shouldn't speak. They should speak Yiddish. But he says now. He says in, nowadays, if you force the kids to learn in Yiddish, you're going to lose a major portion of the kids. And, and so the, the, the even the people that made the it, even if they had some kind of halachic status of exera or whatever, but they didn't make exera with the with the intent of losing. So the Chazanish was very practical. I, it, it's I, you can't infer from the story what what did he hold that it's. It's better to speak Yiddish. It's better to speak Hebrew. I, wait, it, I don't know, but it, 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 but he said it's a non-issue. Just leave it alone, and <clears throat> it, it, let the kids speak. Uh, and that became the standard. I I I, I believe that this the Chazonish's opinion gave it like a stamp of approval on the yeshivas that they uh, that be that they that it's uh, that they should. Uh, uh, speak Hebrew in the in in the yeshiva. I mean, nowadays all the yeshivas they speak Hebrew. I think all, the I don't think Shira Mar and in, in Eretz in the Litvish yeshiva. No, the mayor. The mayor is. They still have a Yiddish. Most of them have Yiddish. They still have a Yiddish. Rav Asher is is not in Yiddish. It is. Oh, I thought Rav Asher was in Hebrew. Oh, it's in Yiddish. So how do they understand it? It's a big issue. Month and then they learn. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not so easy to learn. I I came to Philadelphia Yeshiva when I was sixteen, and I never heard a, a word of Yiddish in my life. My Rebbe never did never spoke a word of English. It was Ramel Kaplan, and uh, I didn't understand what he was talking about. So I had he assigned to me Avram Maimon from Seattle. He assigned him that he should sit next to me and explain to me this year. So it took me about six months till I began to understand on my own what Ramel was saying. But it's it's. Uh, Okay, 
Anyway, so that's that's going to be our bottom line that it's okay to speak Hebrew, it's a mitzvah to speak Hebrew, you should speak Hebrew. But I'm gonna, but it's still very interesting to see the position of the uh, the Kleisenberger and the Satha Rebbe. The Kleisenberger was a, a great person. There was after the after the Holocaust, he he he, uh, he opened yeshivas in the DP camps. He took care, especially the, a, a lot of the girls who were orphans. He took care of them. There's so many guys too. Guys too, and there's so so many uh, beautiful stories about his sensitivity. I had the schus of um, of, he, of hearing shiurim from him in 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 the beginning of the 1980s. I he was in, there was a Kleisenberg bungalow colony near my bungalow colony, my bungalow, not in near my in Woodburn. There was a Kleisenberg bungalow colony, and he used to give a chumash shir um, at Thursday evening, and it's uh, like two three hours, and it was packed, and there he. he he, the Kleisenberger was, was a great grandson of the Sanzer Rebbe, and I thought when you looked at the Kleisenberger, you had a like an inkling of what it, what the Sanzer Rebbe must have looked like. I mean, he he looked like a malach. He had fiery eyes, and he was a very uh, passionate person. And he was also he wasn't just he, besides being a Chassidish Rebbe, he was he was a tremendous Talmud Chacham. So he wrote he wrote for him what, what the, the his Shaul Shuvah Sefer is called Divrei Yatsif. So he basically. Um, Follows the the his, his he he hangs his hat on the chasam sofer. Okay. If you look on page three, he says he says since on the top of page three on the right side he says Ufine istaiti came in shachasam sofer because of shizeh shalom b'darben lo shakodesh mishagalu l'bavol machmas she malachas shmoreya giluim from the time they went to bavol. They they stopped speaking Hebrew and he accepts that as that 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 is the reality. So if you if now if you look on the I I, I had more material here but I I knew I wouldn't have enough time to finish so I I'm just going to give you some highlights. So look at the first arrow on the left side. So he said, the Chassam Sofer says that you shouldn't speak Hebrew because there's there's uh, idols all over the place and 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 uh, religious symbols. So he says, worse than that, much worse than that is that people use Hebrew to say to say Gloshon Hara and Rechila and Sheker, and there's also Nivel Peh. In in the Russian Kodesh, they they managed to develop. So he says that's worse than talking in the basic He says, in other words, it, you you don't have a right to take a language that's holy and use it indiscriminately. You can't just use it all the time. We don't do that. But he says that there are people that used to they used to talk in 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 in, in shul during davening and during laning. The Ovid Kalana Lushina Lushinta Rahman said it's a bizarre for for the Shina. Vim the old Belasha Kodish are the old be yeser shall go together uh if you if you if if you speak during davening or in your or if you speak Lashanara, so it's much it it's it's even worse. But yes, be gather hagam luchbash is a malki mi b'vayis. He takes that from uh, from Megillus Esther that that when Haman fell at uh, Esther's feet, Achishver says, in in the in front of me, you're you're trying to uh, seduce my wife. But does that really matter? I mean, where uh, then by Yisrael when they were speaking Lashon Kodesh? By where? Oh, in by Yisrael right? Right. Were they like? Careful to speak non-Lashon Hakodesh when they spoke Lashon Hara. That's what he's saying. That there was more. Speaking Lashon Hara. Like, does it really matter what language you're speaking? Yeah, he's saying it's worse. It's worse. The the Ramam the Ramam says that it's worse. There's a parish Mishnayis. I don't know if I put it in here, but the Ramam says that in the parish Mishnayis that to say that that to speak Lashon Hara in in the in Hebrew Lashon Kodesh is worse than to speak it in. You're better off speaking with a secular language than speak Lashon Kodesh because you're doing two averses. You're speaking Lashon Hara and you're defiling Lashon Kodesh. <laughs> what bracha do you make on a cheeseburger? I mean, it's... Well, Rambam ever in the Knesset? Yeah. So, and he says in the next paragraph, he says, 
Rakidoshim with the Horam Kagra, Asher Komach Shavos, Vayera Yomogai, Kali Mechaev Dabuk, Vashem at the Rasul Hutu, Dabu Gashikarish. The, um, the, 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 um, the, 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 the Gra spoke Ashen Kodesh. He was, he was a Yachid. So he says, somebody who was as holy as the Gra, and he, and he didn't speak Lashen Hara, obviously, or, or anything improper. So he was, uh, he, 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 but there were Yachidi school. There were not a lot of people. That uh, that spoke exclusively Lashon Har. I'm not going to read to you the last paragraph. You can look at it yourself. You'll get that. It's, you'll start. You're, you'll get very upset. So I won't read it to you. <laughs> okay. Look at the next page. That's the that was that's the Kleisenberger. Yeah. Okay. Look. I was, if I said it already, it's like telling you. Uh, he he says that that um, he, he he considers Lash, uh, Ivris to be to be a Lashon of Ovri Avera. He says that's why it's called Ivris from, from the word Avera. No. So, what? Doesn't his top Talmud speak in Ibris? His top? Ta- Rav Asher Weiss. Oh, Rav Asher Weiss. Yeah, that's yeah, a good question. English. So you, 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 so you can, you have to ask Rav Asher Weiss. How come the Kaisenbergers said not to speak Rav Asher Weiss? Yeah, he speaks. Yes, yeah, his Hebrew is impeccable, just like his English is. That's an excellent question. Yeah, probably tell you so that he has outreach to all of Amis. Yeah. So that's yeah. why he has his outreach. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Could be. He, he, thinks he, he thinks it's not. It's a it's a distorted it's a distorted language. It's like Yiddish is a distorted German. So, oh, you should say that you should be able to. If you say that it's a, so, he apparently holds that it's it it's still it has elements because some of the words are are unadulterated. So, to, so you should you shouldn't be using the the any part of the language. That to speak Lashon Hara, but you but but because it's intertwined, you, it's impossible not to use the other words. So it becomes uh, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't speak it at all. But that's like Yiddish, same problem. What's the difference between Hebrew and Yiddish? They both have some Lashon Hara in it. The difference, what? Yeah, but the difference is the Lashon Kodesh by the original, by, by, the original? by he, he 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 he's saying that the the people distorted the Lashon Kodesh. But the the he, he, modern Hebraeus, distor- besides the fact that you're speaking, uh, the, the people are using it to speak inappropriately, Lashon Hara and, and things like that, it talks during davening. But he also says it, it was distorted by the modern Hebraeus, and therefore to, 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 to follow their example is being disrespectful to the Hebrew language. That's what when did he write this, Rabbi? Um, I don't know. There's a. I. I only. I. I. I have the beginning of the truth at home. I don't. I don't know what the date was. I mean, the Kaisenberger died around 1990, I think, something like that. Oh, okay. So it was. So, uh, it was. A, it was a, maybe 40, 50 years ago. Right in the Megillah. Yeah, and plus, you know, all the borrowed Latin words and the Greek words and the Mishnaya, tons and tons of them. Languages evolve. He's he's not he didn't he's not saying that. It, I don't think he means that the distortion is that they added. Well, I don't know. Well, first of all, it could be that the difference is because it became it, it, it heavily distorted with with additional words, and also the even the use of the words. They use the same Hebrew words. They they use it. They the sentence constructions are different. So, I don't know. That's what he says. I, let yeah, me, my, the reason I asked when he wrote it is I wonder if maybe he changed his mind over time as as Israel evolved. I, this, you know, I, I don't know. Years ago. I, I don't know. I'm sure in his hospital they didn't speak Yiddish. In the Gladiano hospital, right. they, they spoke. <laughs> the patients would have all died if they if the doctors <laughs> would have communicated with them in Yiddish. Right. Okay, I want to show you what the Satan Rebbe says. Look at page four. So and I, I took, also took a, he has a long he has a, a about twenty pages thirty pages on Lashon Kodesh my Lashon Kodesh this is in the Sefer of Yehovah Moshe so he says the on page four he says Lavacha came in Sharif Varosh Varama Milchosu B'Shulchanar V'Chol Nosu Kei I have it underlined on the left V'Chol Nosu Kei Um Kulin Kasu Lashon Hashas since all the the poskim quote the Gemara and Sukkah the way it is Shishmitu Lesliim and Lashon Lo Hiskiru Mizek Klal After Emes the Vadai Shechriu Ken Halacha. It's clear that the major poskim all paskin, not like the Torah Tamima, that there's no mitz, there's no mitz, no chiv, and there's no mitzvah Levim Ben Lashin. 
Vein kasha aleya mashu neged sifri v'tesefta. So the but the Torah to me is big kasha is but the sifri and the tesefta say there is a mitzvah. He says sharei b'yushalmi uvi b'rashbam ein lemedim lo min halachus lo min teseftas el min a gemara. We don't we we follow the gemara. We don't follow what it says uh, in 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 other other sefar, in uh, uh, even uh, other rices etc. Then at the bottom of the page he says. But, I mean, the Satmarov happened to also be a brilliant Tamil Chacham. If you learn through this whole tshuva, you'll see his brilliance. He says, the Bible page says, The Ram says that they should be Zarb and Mitzvah Kal Chamura. And he says, the example of Mitzvah Kal is, 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 uh, is, is Lashon Kodesh. So he says, so that would seem to indicate that the Ram holds that you, there is a Mitzvah. He says, I'll require Kosovo based Yosef. The, he says if there's a count, there are places where there's a conflict between the parish of Mishnayis and the Ramam and the Yad Chazaka. He wrote the Yad Chazaka at a later period of time. So whenever there's a conflict, we pass like the Yad Chazaka. So Ramam and the Yad Chazaka does not mention any mitzvah speaking Lashon Kodesh. So therefore, halach is that there's no such mitzvah. Then he says on the next page, uh, he says, "Ach Barashi, where again we have the arrow. Ach Barashi al Torah, heavy drasha kamosh mivur b'sifri." But he says, "But Rashi, after all, brings the drasha that the the debat the bomb there is a mitzvah to speak lashon kodesh." So, so you can't. How do you just dismiss Rashi? He says, "Avuk rakosa be Shmuel shuzed darko shavashi af begemar shemevi apirish yosher pashit." Rashi oftentimes will, will bring. Uh, explanations in the psukim after lesel chasachi, even though it's not necessarily a halacha, because he's going with the play, with the simple meaning. Vehevi kamarayis ledavar, vechein haradvaz, the cause of haradvaz shekal gadol who be a danish to Rashi parshin who will paskin. You can't pass him from Rashi because Rashi's intention and focus is to explain the psukim, not to tell you what the psak halach is. So then he says, v'chumish mm-hmm. tarat mima again by my arrows. He turned the other world upside down. Then how come the Ramam and the Shulchan Aruch left out the uh, the mitzvah speaking Lashon Kodesh? You have the Tosefta and the and the uh, and the Sifri and the Ramam Parish Mishnayis. So he says Umash Shikasav again. We're talking about Umash Shikasav. Tar Tami Shigam Gemara Tzarech Omer Kain Tar Tami changed the gears in the Gemara. He says uh, the, the the big kasha on him is that the Gemara in Sukkah doesn't say there's a mitzvah. To speak Lashon Kodesh, it changes the text. It's differently than it's quoted in the Sifri and the Tesefta. So the Torah Tamim says there must be a mistake in the Gersa. So the 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 Sat Rebbe rallies against that. He says we don't have a right to to start uh, to to uh, change the the Gersa and the Sifri and the Tesefta. adding words into the Gemara. Even though, it, even though there are many. Places where the has different gear and says that any where there's different gears, but he says in the parts here that I didn't underline. He says that, that you have all all the, the Risharim and Achronim went through with a fine tooth comb, or all, all, all the shas, and if they didn't put it in, we don't have a right to just say, well, I have a theory that it, something's missing. He says ve'ikar hechiyala on the left side hechiyala das after the stopping zel shulach yab beizah shini b'diri atamad mashul alshur or afechem and Risharim. The Risharim don't. Mentioned such that that there's a missing gear. So the chas shalom and derech zeh yuchu yuchu hapal dibri kim chayim live those bamalas. You could you could you could change distort all sorts of things if you're going to start uh, introducing uh, changing the gear. So and that's how you're going to answer kashas by changing the gear. So so then he says on page six, and he says. Um, On the left hand column, yeah. Oh, it's the left hand column first. He says, The bottom left. So he says, How come, in fact, there's no, there's, the, 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 it's completely left out of the shas, even though the Tesefta and the Sifri say there's a mitzvah, so even if we don't pass them, but how come there's no, absolutely no, no mention? So he says, So he quotes the, uh, the Tzlach. The 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 tzlach is explaining the the in 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 the Gemara says in where is this in in in, um, in, in the end of my cotton not in my cotton 
I don't remember, in Tainus maybe. The, the Gemara says that, that he's our, the Rebbe Loser told his, his children, he told, he told the, his, when he was dying, he told people, you, you should make sure your children are not involved in Higoyon. So Rashi says, if you look on the, on the right side now, Rashi says you shouldn't teach them Chumash, uh, the Tzlach says, the Tzlach is explaining the Rashi, the Tzlach says that the, the reason why the, uh, the, the um, Rebbe Lazar t- t- told people that they shouldn't, shouldn't focus totally on Chumash is because the, uh, the many, many times people who, who study Chumash, they enjoy the language and then they leave the the uh, the religious part. They 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 leave and they um, and they become um, focused totally on the beauty of the language, and therefore they they would be a not a not a good influence on the rest of the seaboard. Okay, that's so that's that's he has a series of reasons why they stopped speaking Hebrew. So this is one reason. He says because too too much focused on the language. Would uh, would would end up? It, would people would make the language into into an end in itself, and that would be a uh, distraction. Okay, it's a it's a reason. It doesn't seem to be such a strong, compelling reason, but this first reason. Then he says on the next page, in page seven, who could they have an Indian yoser? But meshin I gave loshin kodesh may roi loshin leiv. Here he asked the kash that I was at. Told you before, you, we should we should think about. Lama Nezef Kol Kachu Shenenu Loshen Hakodesh Old Mikad Mestana. Already from early times, they stopped speaking Loshen Hakodesh. Af Eitzah Chacham Megdol Matzum. The next day, Anan Hine Yat Talmud Chibur B'Loshen Arami Meurim Mishar Loshonos. They wrote the Gemara in Aramaic, and it's Aramaic with uh, also distorted with other languages, corrupted with other languages. Kamosh Shekasa Raman Behakta Maso Hatam. And the Ram says the reason is the Ram and the Parish I have it on the left side. But the Ram says the Fisha also Malashon Haya Baruru Khalishi Shinar Ba the the Aish Khubra Gamara. When when they wrote the Gamara, that's that's what people understood. They, they didn't understand they didn't understand Lash and Kodish. No, so but he's asking how come? If they they, they didn't understand it because they didn't speak it, but why didn't they speak it? And then on page eight he says, Gam Miloshan Asifri he says, even the Sifri that says you should speak Lash and Kodesh. So he says, but the Sifri says you should speak Lash and Kodesh. And he says, and, and Rashi also says, and Rashi also says, how come this is a free says you should speak Lash and Kodesh? And then he says, and then he says, how come the Sifri says that you should start talking to your, your kids in, in Hebrew? <laughs> what else are you going to speak? If they spoke Hebrew, but at the at, at that period of time when the Sifri was recorded, so of course you can speak to him in Hebrew. What do you can speak to him in French? So he says, and 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 when and when it, when the, the, the Sifri says that when the child starts to speak, you should teach him Hebrew. What language was the child speaking? German, French, Spanish. Of course, he would speak Hebrew if that would be the vernacular. So he says, and he says, and the Rambam says, Rambam Parakid Beis Milchus Tefil Kostum Yimos Ezra Nogu Shihei Turgamah Metargim Lama Ashikari Kar Betar Kadesh Yivinu Inyan Edoram. They, they, there was an old minig that they had already, even in Bais Rishon, that they had a Metargiman. If in the time of Ezra, that's how far back it goes, that they, that they, that they were not fluent in Hebrew. They had to have somebody translate the words of the Torah into Aramaic. That's oh, you're right. The beginning of Bais Sheni. I'm skipping to where it's underlined. If there is a mitzvah to speak Hebrew, so then how come Ezra, they came to Eretz Yisrael, they were intermarried, he made all sorts of takanas to, to return things to the, to the proper... A level of religiosity. So how come he didn't focus on on, uh, on on the on the on the language? And then he says on the left side, "Uman nishtan etzleinu shigam bimei Ezra machzit shel barat shisol hayav sharashi vino loshen." He says, "He says how come? In other words, we're speaking Hebrew in, in Eretz Yisrael. They they lived in Eretz Yisrael for hundreds of years and they didn't speak Hebrew. 
that that's the strength of his, of his argument. Okay, you said before what you said I heard, but that that's his argument that it, it, in Eretz Yisrael for hundreds of years they weren't speaking Ashkenaz. There has to be some reason why weren't they speaking Ashkenaz. So he says he basically he follows the position of the Chassam Sofer. Um, he's on the next page on page nine. He says he quotes the Chassam Sofer. It, the language was forgotten because when they were when they were in in in, in Gbavol, they couldn't speak here because there were idols all over the place with um, the, uh, the that the, the Romans and the Greeks spoke. They're right all over the place. Okay, so that's it. So then he says. But he, okay, and then here's, but it, here's the, the fine. So these, these are, he, he's suggesting different reasons. But here's his final reason why he says, why is it that they didn't speak Hebrew? So the Kleisenberger said because it would it would be because um, because you're using the language for uh, things that are inappropriate. So he says almost the same thing. He says, Vasher Anochi, on page ten. Vasher Anochi, Echsa Bezalfine Istaiti, the Hini Kasa Ramam Beperish Musachas Avos. The Ram says in Pirish Mishnayas. So, so this quote is a hard quote. Oh, I didn't even put an arrow here. The 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 Ram says Via Echa Mishnaya Piyutim Ivri Vecha Arvi Olaz Yesh Mias Ivri Vadibu Yosin Nimas Eitzel Atora Lamala Lamal Salashon. It's worse to have a a love poem, let's say, in Hebrew than it is to have it in in, in than to say than to have it in Aramaic. You should only use Hebrew for for areas of, of Kedusha. So he says, I say he says if you look at the bottom, he says, Right? He says the Ram says it's not a problem to have a love poem in Hebrew. Why is it a problem to have a love poem in Hebrew? But he says here, okay, I didn't read it to you. He says that initially they they in the earlier generations they they spoke he the, the Sifri says that when you teach a child you should teach him Russian Kodesh. Because even though they they weren't speaking it all the time, but they still recognize it as important to teach the to teach Torah with Lashon Hakodesh. But then he says time went on, and the uh, and 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 they saw that it was that people's people's re- religious level was diminished, so they they felt that it's inappropriate to speak it all together. That's basically his thesis. So he's saying that even then they, they it's kind of what the Torah field was saying: speak Hebrew. Specifically to teach the to teach the language. Now he didn't say speak exclusively. Why? You know, I'm saying, but he's saying that what they were doing, what they were doing was they were speaking Hebrew in addition to whatever the language they, were they spoke. Here, right here, he says that they didn't speak exclusively Hebrew in the time that, when the Sifri was recorded. They spoke other languages, but they were teaching their children to speak Russian Kodesh because in order to understand the Torah, so, so that's, that they, was actually ironic. That's what Torah Shmuel was saying. He said basically, do it so that you. He also was yeah, speaking whatever he was speaking with Torah Shmuel. Yeah, but he's saying that. But you see that afterward, the Ram doesn't bring it down halacha. The Ram leaves it out. So how come the Ram leaves it out? That's that's his big kasha. Well, we had the thing with the psukim. Maybe he was saying. What? He had the thing where you mentioned the psukim. That was in the uh, teach him a little bit of psukim that we told me. Oh, about. that. that well, that, that that yeah, that was the the uh, the explanation of the um, of the mafarish and and the seisefta. Seems to me to talk about this. You need to you need to understand what is Russian Kodesh. Where 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 did it start? There was it was started. It was, the, the Torah was written in Russian Kodesh. The world was created with Russian Kodesh. It was a God given language. That's what Russian Kodesh. The Ran in the Dharam says that there's a difference between Russian Kodesh and other languages. Other languages are not inherent languages because they're they're only social conventions. So people got together and decided to make up words, but they're not. In, but Russian Kodesh is an inherent language. It, it, that's how God created the world, and that's it. It it it, it is the language of of re, uh, it's, it's a language of reality, not not so other languages. And it doesn't evolve. No, it it does evolve. Everybody agrees that the the, 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 the Mishnah was evolving, but he but but the but the but the the, the Hasidim don't like the evolution that took place in Eretz Yisrael that because they felt that it, it's corrupting the language more even more. If if there were 
a, a conscious decision to uh, stop speaking Hebrew uh, or, or, or to not uh, um, bring back Hebrew at a certain point in time for, for halakha, because of halakha considerations uh, way, way back. And wouldn't we expect there to be some record of that before the 19th century? The same as if, they, if it was purposeful, why isn't it written He's, down that he, you shouldn't do it? You shouldn't do it. You mean, he, 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 he brought up, uh, it's not the Rebbe brought strong riots that they didn't speak Hebrew but then. They didn't speak no, 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 yeah, but, but why but not, not say specifically? But why didn't, it, why didn't it say that there was a decision, they made it, they, they made, at some point they decided, now we're not going to speak Hebrew anymore. I hear, I don't know. Look at page 13. On page 13, he says, here, you, here we talk about the, um, the the integrity of the language. He says, mm-hmm. on the left side, mm-hmm. they changed not only the words, but they changed the pronunciation. Mm-hmm. They, they, they went, people who are Ashkenazim are not supposed to speak like Svardim. Because that's not their minig of, of of talking. So he says, "Ho sif the harbe shinuim chadashim asher losa ravasei seinu vavas avaseinu for ho sif for ho sifu milos chadashes harbe murkavim belashin asher tzarech uzeh lishanas iker hanakuda kimin kim hamen hag es osios uboim was but they kfiru gemur of ktushes halashin." He he quotes another place. He quotes a a rabbeinu bachio says that the. That if you if you pl- play around with the, I didn't put it in here, but I should have. The, the, he says that the the um, the 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 kudos. Oh, he has it. It's on the no. He has he quotes it on the other on the right side. If you look at the right side. He says, um, he says the 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 Rebbeinu Bachia. Look at the fourth line. He says because of Shaz- or fifth line on the right side. Shazam me chokmas tar sein al alokis l'shon l'shon ha kedusha and the kudos. Minios osios kimosha and shama mini aguf. The 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 kudos give life to the letters, or they move them the same way that the shama gives life to the guf. So if you if you ta- if you change the kudos, you could take a word that has one meaning by just switching around, changing the osios. You're killing the words. So he's saying in modern Hebrew, e- even the pronunciation and the uh, the osios were were changed. Okay, that's. Well, it seems like he's having both sides. On the one hand, he's saying. It's a lesson codish. You shouldn't be using it for secular matters, so you shouldn't be speaking it. That's what that, On the other hand, he's yes, saying, that, well, it's a that's different what, language. That was pointed out before by uh, yeah. by one of our colleagues here. And I said he, he holds that it still has it, it has elements of Lashon HaKodesh, so therefore it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be distorting it. You shouldn't be using it for, for saying things that are inappropriate. But wouldn't that, why would that not be true? Because Yiddish is not... Primarily, yeah, Lush and Kodesh. It has a lot of Hebrew words in it. What? It has a lot of Hebrew words in it. <coughs> but it has a known Heron Kedusha. So if you say a lot of Hara used in, in Yiddish, and 20% of your statements was Hebrew words, is that... Like, I don't know if the 20% of Yiddish is Hebrew. I don't... Yeah, I hear... I so. Something like that, I believe so. I, I don't know. I Okay. The foundation of Igris was Lush and Kodesh. The foundation of Yiddish was German. Right. You can a, a right. It's Hebrew primarily word. not Lush and Kodesh. Like, they, they, they cha- you don't say Yiddish is a change around of Hebrew, of, right. of Lush and Kodesh. So you define it by schem- uh, schematics yeah. and grammar? Like the root of the no, I'm saying the way they developed the language. It's primarily it's primarily Hebrew with a, with some with some changes. Lush and Kodesh is uh, Ivers is Lush and Kodesh with changes. Yiddish is German with Hebrew. All right, everybody's making terrific points, but I'm rushing because I just want to show you the the final points here. Is on on page fourteen, the Shalah Kodesh on the bottom of the page by the arrow. He says. The Shalosh of about 500 years ago, he says, the Hasidim, they speak Lash HaKodesh on Shabbos. He Kodesh HaYom Adonayinu V'Shabbos Osu Beinu Yisparachu V'Neinu Akein Eilu Dabra Lash HaKodesh. Af Ma'ashim Ruchu Dabra, even if you have to speak, you should speak Lash HaKodesh. V'Ashim Mi Shemargo L'Sasbo Dabra Lash HaKodesh Af Yimei Achol. 
he ain't erech l'malas So he 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 would probably disagree with the presentation of the of the Kleisenberger and Sater Rebbe because he's saying everybody should try to speak Russian Kodesh as much as they can. Rav Moshe, in, we I, we saw this two weeks ago. Rav Moshe says that if you look on the top of the page, the Rav Moshe is talking about whether you're allowed to use secular names. So he says even though the Gemara says that the, one of the reasons why they were niggles because they didn't change their names, the Gamkin So he says he, he, he's, he's going to compare not changing names to, to not speak to speaking Hebrew. He says he just he doesn't he doesn't analyze it for us, but he, you see the Ramasha assumes that there is a mitzvah to speak Hebrew because he quotes the Sifri and he quotes Rashi. Even though there's a mitzvah, there's not it's not us or not to talk Hebrew. They'll call you Shah Midab Washakal, Shah Umos, and Zmango, Seno Bhadeno Bain Umos. The Afrika Dori Torah of Khasid Olam or Dibu Washan Kodesh. So he says so he says, by the same token, it, it, it's it's a, they, they having a Jewish name is is a mitzvah, but it's not a chiyuv. But anyway, Rav Moshe does not he he he. Okay, we don't have an in depth analysis from Rav Moshe, but you see, Rav Moshe says that speaking Hebrew is a uh, is a mitzvah. Okay. Bottom line is that I, what what I just want to say one last thing is that the I know that the the Kaisenberger and the Satra Rebbe would, are of a different opinion, and I'm not one to disagree. But the fact is, the Lashon HaKodesh, besides being a holy language, but speaking Lashon HaKodesh in Eretz Yisrael holds on to a lot of people. It gives them, even people totally secular, Baruch Hashem, they're speaking Hebrew. Because they, they, in Israel, they, they, you don't, people that don't keep Purim, but there's a Purim in, in Eretz Yisrael. They don't keep Pesach, they eat Chometz, but there's Pesach in Eretz Everybody knows what Pesach is. And, and they're talking Lashon and Kodesh. So, I mean, that's what I think, is that it, it, in the end, the language elevates them, even though even with all the, 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 the problems and the flaws and the uh, inadequacies, but Lashon HaKodesh elevates even secular Jews, uh, wherever they may be, because it's a holy tongue. And make Torah much more accessible to them, if they ever... That's absolutely true as well. Yes, yes. Okay.